Hello everyone, welcome to the series of VMware vSphere Install, Configure, Manage. In this session, we are going to have a discussion on server virtualization, storage virtualization, and network virtualization. Moving on, we will discuss about what is data store, we will understand VMFS file system, and finally, we will see thin disk and thick disk. So coming to the introductory part of the virtualization, guys, there are two approach of virtualization. The first approach is virtualization management layer. Consider you are having a laptop or a desktop with 16 GB RAM, i7 CPU and 500 GB SSD. Let's say you have a Windows 11 operating system installed on this laptop. After purchasing the laptop, you realize that you are using only 10% of your resources and remaining 90% is of no use for you. Being a technical guy, you will say I have done a huge investment and not using full resources. Remember, there is a software with the name VMware Workstation. Similarly, Microsoft has its own software called Virtual PC and Oracle has a software Oracle Box. We are learning VMware vSphere, so we will be focusing on the VMware solutions itself. What you can do, you can simply install a VMware Workstation on your laptop and inside it, you can install virtual machines the virtual machines which you are going to create on the top of your vmware workstation it can be a windows operating system a linux operating system or any other os and to when you install these virtual machines the resources like the memory storage cpu which you are going to assign to these virtual machines will be assigned through the laptop your laptop resources will be utilized by this virtual machine so i can say that using a single pc i am doing efficient utilization of my resources so now if i want to do any testing i am not buying any new hardware on my existing hardware i am installing a vmware workstation and then i am installing the virtual machines with different os such kind of virtualization is called as virtualization using management layer so in short in management layer virtualization your virtualization software is dependent on host operating system and operating system is managing this virtualization software now let's say if you have a windows machine and due to some reason this machine goes into hang state so the ultimate solution is a restart if you restart your laptop all your vm inside a vmware workstation will go down so this kind of virtualization is good where you install a virtualization software and create a virtual machines on your existing hardware for testing purpose. But remember that over here, everything is dependent on host operating system. So this kind of virtualization technique can be used for testing or R&D purpose, but it cannot be used in your production environment in your data center. The second type of virtualization technique is dedicated virtualization. Over here, there is no operating system installed on hardware. You cannot install Windows, Linux because they are general purpose operating system. So when I say a dedicated virtualization on your high end hardware, when you buy a high end hardware over here, we have to get a VMware vSphere from VMware. When we go to VMware vSphere and ask for a virtualization software, they will be providing you ESXi. ESXi is an operating system. This operating system is dedicated only for virtualization and that is the reason it comes in the generic term hypervisor. 
the generic term for this is hypervisor just remember that ESXi is a very robust and a reliable operating system similar to the installation of Windows and Linux using ISO bootable image we can also install ESXi on the hardware basically you have to have the bootable USB and just put the USB in the USB slot of your high-end hardware and you can boot using that USB where you have a ISO image of your ESXi. Such installation is also known as bare metal installation. So after installing ESXi, just remember that you cannot install any other application like what you do in Windows operating system or Linux operating system. In Windows operating system or Linux operating system, when you install the operating system, uh, either it is Windows or Linux, on the top of it, you can install several other applications like Google Chrome, Microsoft Office, or uh, you can say Adobe Reader and so many applications. But remember that ESXi is a dedicated for virtualization and once you install ESXi, you cannot install any application. You can only create a virtual machine. So what used to happen in earlier time, in earlier time we used to have a hardware and we were installing the single operating system. As you can see over here, in earlier days we used to have hardware and over the hardware we were installing an operating system and on top of it was a single application running. So we used to have a server, let's say for example a 64 GB RAM and hardly 20 GB was in use by the application. So assuming that you have a 64 GB RAM in your server in earlier day and hardly 20 GB RAM was utilized. So I can say that 44 GB RAM was wasted. Then modernization came into picture and ESXi 1.0 version was the first release in the year 2001. Just remember that we are in to the ESXi version 8 now. Recently in the year 2022, VMware released the new version that is ESXi version 8. So the things are changed now and now in a high-end hardware, so you are going to have a high-end hardware with a RAM of let's say 128 GB. And we will be installing a ESXi over here on this high-end hardware. And on the top of it, as you can see over here in the image that uh, virtual machines are being created. As you can see over here, uh, you have a high-end hardware. Let's say it has a RAM of 128 GB and on the top of it, uh, ESXi is installed and the virtual machines are created lots of virtual machines are created and these virtual machines are using the resources from the high end hardware a physical host so let's say you will have a machine whose requirement is 32 gb ram or a machine with 12 gb ram you can allot a resources from your physical host so now remember on a single machine multiple virtual machines you are running and the base is hypervisor that is nothing but ESXi. Now let's have a discussion on server virtualization. In today's world everyone is talking about cloud computing. So let's say how much important is VMware let's understand how much important is VMware I can say that a VMware is a base of cloud computing and to verify this what we are going to do is we will be going to the VMware site and I will show you that each and every cloud provider a reputed cloud provider are using VMware as their base so let me open the web browser I will go to VMware website and over here in products, I will click on products. You will see that 
almost each and every reputed cloud provider, whether it is Alibaba, Azure, Google Cloud, IBM or Oracle, all are using VMware platform. So you can imagine how much powerful VMware is and each and every cloud service provider is using VMware. VMware. So there is no doubt VMware is a base of cloud computing. So without any doubt, we can come to the conclusion that VMware is a backbone of cloud or I can say that backbone of cloud is nothing but a virtualization. Now we have been discussing these things like if you have a high end hardware, what you are going to do is you will be installing a ESXi host or a hypervisor and on the top of it, you will be creating a virtual machine, a multiple virtual machines with different different operating system. So I can say that virtualization is placing an additional layer of software called a hypervisor on the top of your physical server. Once the ESXi installation is completed, I can say that the hypervisor enables you to install multiple operating systems and application on a single server. Server virtualization has many benefits and I can say many IT and business benefits are gained from server virtualization. When I say many benefits of virtualization, let's see how many benefits. This we will understand using an example. Now I have opened a notepad because I need to write something and show you like how many benefits you have from the virtualization. Let's understand this by taking an example. Let's say that in my company there are around 300 physical servers. And now you are planning to convert these physical machines to virtual machines. So the very first step or I can say the very first thing what you will do is you will be doing a utilization assessment or you can say a provision utilization of resources versus utilize resources like what resources you have now with you in the physical environment and what exactly the resources are utilized and how much resources are still not in use once you are done with the utilization assessment now once you have calculated the utilization and further on what you will do is you will add extra resources in the provisioning like let's say for example you have calculated the resources you have come to the conclusion that this is a value of the resources you will be required so on that final value you will be adding the extra resources in the provisioning considering the future requirement once you have completed with the utilization assessment considering the extra resources which may be required for the future requirement the second thing you are going to do is you will be using a software from the VMware called as P2V Converter. And guys, don't worry, whatever we are discussing over here, theoretically, we will be doing a hands-on lab and justifying each and everything. And again, I repeat that if you think that your resources in your PC or a laptop is not enough to perform the lab to install the ESX file, you don't have to worry. We have a solution where we will be doing a lab together and you will be in sync with me. So, okay, coming to the topic, you will be using a P2V converter that is physical to virtual converter to convert all your physical machine to virtual machine. So using virtualization, we are running multiple servers on one physical server with the resources as required. In short, I can say that you are not paying for extra resources which you don't need. Usually in earlier days when you were having a physical server as I told you that you were having a 64 GB RAM but what you was actually using is 20 GB RAM and 44 GB RAM was not in use. But when I say virtualization over here you are using one high end server and on the top of it you are having around 20 virtual machines. So by allotting uh, resources as and when required, how much is required, I can say that you are not paying extra resources cost. Okay, let's understand the benefits of virtualization. Assume that you have 300 servers now. 
and further on you are converting this 300 servers to the virtual servers so just imagine that sorry guys i miss out the point uh, okay let me repeat assume that you have 300 servers and now you want to convert this into the virtual machine assuming that you can run 20 virtual machines in one physical hardware in virtualization you will require 15 ESXi host uh, I will just write down the calculation over here for the better understanding you are having 300 physical servers so now you are converting into virtual servers assuming that on one virtual uh, one physical hardware one ESXi you will run 20 VM so in total you will require 15 ESXi host right? 300 physical servers you are converting to virtual servers and assuming that on one ESXi host one physical hardware you will run 20 virtual machines so in total uh, you will require 15 ESXi host now just imagine this 300 physical servers do you know how much space will be required if you are putting this 300 physical servers in the data center how much space will be required moving on how much racks will be required how many power sockets and how many cooling cost will be required and not only this let's move further imagine that this 300 servers come with dual power supplies in production you will require a redundant power supply right so for this 300 servers 300 into 2 power supply equal to 600 power supply you will need for redundancy for the 300 servers on the NIC side NIC card for the networking you will require 300 into 2 NIC cards on one server 2 means 300 into 2 equal to 600 NIC cards you will require now this NIC cards will be connected to switch and to the switch they will be connected through UTP cables so 300 servers you have 300 into 2 UTP cable for each server you can say that 600 UTP cables will be required for 300 servers you have 600 UTP uh, cables uh, 600 NIC cards so 600 ports assuming that one switch has 48 ports somewhere around let's say 13 switches will be required so just imagine the huge cost that will come for procuring 600 power supplies for the 300 servers to achieve a redundancy then 600 NIC card 600 UTP cables somewhere around 13 switches of 48 ports so how much huge cost will occur that's one of the big benefit of virtualization which we are going to understand now so guys just remember this for 300 servers you require 600 power supplies for redundancy 600 NIC card 600 UTP cable and around 13 48 port switches let me take you to the slide I will try to explain how these things will be replaced in virtualization and how much cost will be saved or also will calculate again will come here let me take you to the slide now so just remember that now once you have a high end hardware you have done the installation of the ESXi host or a hypervisor you can say once you have done with that one virtual switch is created inside the ESXi host as soon as you install the ESXi host a virtual switch will be created inside ESXi host you will see over here like this is uh, your physical server and on the top of it you have a virtual machines which are running on the ESXi host 
as soon as you install a ESXi host, a virtual switch will be created over here. You can see a virtual switch will be connected, created, and all the virtual machines will be connected to this virtual switch. And usually, you will see that over the physical server, uh, I mean, you can say it as a ESXi host also. Since you are installing the ESXi, you can say as ESXi host also. So there is one requirement in hardware that the hardware on which you are installing ESXi, it must have four NIC card. It must have at least four NIC card. And why you need four NIC card on the physical host that we will be discussing when we will be doing our labs and we will be understanding the virtual switch concept in detail. See over here, whatever we are discussing now, each and everything we are going to justify it with hands-on lab. Don't worry about that. But the base need to be ready. Like what is server virtualization, what are the benefits, what is virtual switch, how you can save the cost. These things are the basic things which you have to understand. Then only you will be enjoying the hands-on lab. So this making the base is very much important over here. So uh, coming to the topic, when you create a ESXi host, uh, when you install ESXi host, uh, and then what happens along with that a virtual switch is connected. So whenever you create a virtual machine, this virtual machines will be connected to the virtual switch now just remember all vm are connected to the virtual switch okay all the vms are connected to the virtual switch virtual switch is connected to the physical port so this virtual switch is connected to the physical port of your esxi host okay so you can say that this virtual switch that is connected to the physical port which is indirectly connected to the physical switch so i can say that Virtual switch is connected to the physical port of a server and cable from the physical port of the server will go to physical switch. Let me explain you again. You created a ESXi host. In ESXi host, you created a VM. When you install a ESXi host, at that time of a virtual switch is created. So whenever you create a VM, this VM are connected to the virtual switch. This virtual switch is connected to the physical port of the physical server. And physical port of the server will be connected to physical switch now let me take you again to the notepad where we have written the cost for achieving the redundancy using a physical server which was 300 physical server assume that you have converted this physical server to the virtual machine and we will understand the cost impact now how much cost you will save for your organization using virtualization let me take you to that notepad again Okay, so we have assumed that this 300 uh, physical servers when converted to virtual servers on one ESXi host we have 20 virtual machines so we require 15 ESXi host. Okay, so for this 15 ESXi host, for this 15 ESXi, uh, how many NIC card we require? 15 into 4 NIC. I can say 60 NIC are required. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about the cable cost also. 15 ESXi, 15 into 4 UTP cables. How many cables? 60 UTP cables. Let's calculate the switch cost as well. So for six, 15 ESXi, 15 into 4 ports equal to 60 ports which is almost equivalent to 2 switches 48 port 2 switches approximately when less than that 48 port 2 switches will occupy the 60 ports now just imagine See over here from 600 we came to 60. So calculating this amount roughly I can say that we have reduced the networking cost of around 90%. Not only networking cost you can just consider the power supply cost then the cooling cost you can consider. You can consider the space requirement which was there. The rack requirement which was there. So just imagine how much power cost cooling cost will be reduced how much networking cost will be reduced 
so i can say that by doing virtualization you are efficiently using the resources now let's move to the slide again and continue with the topic i believe that this uh, this is well enough for your understanding like how much cost you are saving and not only the cost for the networking or not only the cost for the power supply or i can say that the cost is safe for the cooling for the space requirement is reduced uh, your rack requirement is reduced so huge cost around 90% of the cost you are saving using virtualization just imagine if the resource utilization on one of your ESXi host is going high, we have seen our pre we have seen in our previous session, you have an option called V motion, right? You can perform V motion if the resources on one of your ESXi host is going too high, you can perform V motion and you can live migrate the virtual machine from one hardware to another hardware. Or even we have seen a features like fault tolerance, high availability and distributed resources scheduler available as discussed in our previous session. So I can say that the server virtualization is hardware independent. It is not dependent on the hardware. Like if in case one of the hardware goes down, you can live migrate the machine. You have an option called high availability. You have an option called fault tolerance. You have an option called distributed resource scheduler. So all this option, you uh, if you will see, you will come to conclusion that a server virtualization is hardware independent. Let's discuss how much time you will save during disaster recovery. If in case disaster recovery happens, how much time you will be saving. Now just imagine if in case your physical server fails, okay, you have a physical server in your environment and if it fails, what you have to do is you have to configure the new hardware, then you have to install the operating system, configure the operating system, install the backup agent and start the recovery from the backup, right? This is the case with the physical hardware. But if you have a VMware, Simply what you have to do is you have to restore the virtual machine and power on the virtual machine. Now, if you are understanding the term restore the virtual machine and power on, it's good. If you are not understanding, don't worry. We will be performing a hands-on lab and we will be doing all these things live. You will feel like you are working in a production environment. So you don't need to worry about it. But just understand if you can, if you have a VMware, what you can do is you will restore the VM, how you will restore from your shared storage and then you will simply power on the virtual machine. So I can say that during the disaster recovery, VMware eliminates the recovery steps. The steps which are required, the physical hardware, VMware eliminates the, all those steps. Simply you have to restore the VM and power on the VM. So very first advantage is it eliminates the recovery step. VMware eliminates the recovery step. What steps we are following during the recovery if the physical hardware fails. And standardize the recovery process. So guys, that's all about the server virtualization and now we will move to the discussion about the network virtualization and storage virtualization. Now consider you have a virtual machine running in your VMware workstation. Whether both machine will ping. Everyone is familiar with VMware workstation and now if you have uh, multiple virtual machines running in the environment. So in that case, whether these machines will be pingable to each other? Yes, of course, they will ping after connecting the machines to the bridge network. Let's say you have two machines in uh, your VMware workstation. Two machines are running in your VMware workstation. In order for them to ping to each other, you need to connect them to a bridge network adapter of your workstation, right? 
in a similar pattern when you install a ESXi on your hardware a virtual switch is created we have discussed this whenever you uh, install a ESXi on your physical hardware on a physical server a virtual switch is created and all the virtual machines which are created on your physical host will be connected to virtual switch this virtual switch will be connected to the NIC card of your physical hardware that is a server and this NIC card will be connected to your physical switch this we have just discussed some time before additionally we have discussed about the cost saving also right in earlier days people were buying physical switch physical server nick cards cables but now in vm you have a virtual nick card virtual switch and a virtual cables as well when i say virtual cables if you have worked on VMware workstation, you know that you connect a network, right? A checkbox is check. If you haven't seen, you don't need to worry. In the next session where we will be performing a hands-on lab, these things I will be covering. So, you have a virtual cables as well over there. I will show you that also. So, I can say that network virtualization is nothing but you are getting same functionality in the software network virtualization i can say provides you the network functionality in the software and it saves a huge cost space power etc that we have justified by calculating it on the notepad storage virtualization now consider you are in an office and your office has provided you a laptop Okay, assume that your office has provided you a laptop. A laptop is a very high-end laptop. Why it has given you? Because you will become a 24 by 7 employee of your company. So whenever there is some issue coming in your organization, you connect and you give a 24 by 7 support to your customers. Now let's assume a scenario where you are not ha going happy with the organization for example and you say that to your family member to your kids i am giving you example to understand exactly the server virtualization so that you will have a better understanding so now let's assume that you have given your laptop to your family members and says that my company is not giving me increment so at least you can use it and enjoy now your family members start to play games and surfing all of a sudden what happen is you get a call from your organization and this says that next week you have to go to some client in another city and you have to be over there for some project for next two to three weeks you come to the home and says to your family member that I have to go by next week for some official purpose and I will be carrying a laptop with me. Now your children are unhappy, your family is unhappy that they were enjoying and they were surfing, they were playing the games on the laptop and all of a sudden you have to carry the laptop so their enjoyment is disturbed, right? There is a problem now and if you take the laptop your family member will be unhappy if you don't take the laptop your office people will be unhappy you have referred the new networks youtube channel you are a subscriber of YouTube, uh, new networks you are a smart guy what you can do now you can take the laptop but without taking the laptop you will say how come that is possible yes this is possible you know what you will do you have referred the tutorials with new networks you know these things with these things we are going to do practically live also don't worry you will connect the external hard disk to your laptop you will install p2v converter you will convert this physical machine to virtual machine when you convert the physical machine to virtual machine or you can say whenever a virtual machine is created there are two files there are of course many files we will discuss one by one but basically there is vmdk file and a vmx file vmdk file is virtual machine disk file the vmx file is a configuration file so whenever you create vm it will create a file with extension dot vmdk and dot vmx dot vmx file is a 2kb or 3kb file it is a configuration file 
it contains how much ram you have to give what is the operating system what will be the path all configuration details will be there in this file dot vmdk file will be in gbs depending upon your data and it contains operating system data and application installed and as, as i said the size depend on the data size of your machine you will take this dot vmdk and dot vmx file in usb or external hard disk once you go to new location your office over there will give you a computer in the new location so in your pc you will install a vmware workstation and power on the virtual machine now once you power on the virtual machine you in the vmware workstation you will get the same laptop with same application and data the one you have in your laptop which you kept at home this is how guys you will take a laptop without taking a laptop this was just an example to understand like you will understand uh, the whatever it is written on the slide remove the physical mapping of storage and move storage into logical object this is what we have done in the example right you have removed the physical mapping you have converted your machine to virtual uh, in, uh, that is in the logical object this logical object or virtual object are much more easily managed basically it is a vmdk and vmx file many benefits are achieved from the virtualization of storage lower cost of storage ease of data migration you have seen in the example itself and less administrative burden this was just a brief overview in the coming session where we will be actually performing a lab on storage as well over there we will have a hands on lab and much more expertise you will get over there let's discuss about encapsulation just add a note that when you install a windows your storage will be formatted in ntfs format when you install linux your storage will be formatted in ext format similarly when you install esxi your storage will be formatted in a vmfs format a vm file system format in windows we say drive right the hard disk drive we say in windows drive but in esxi you attach any kind of storage we don't say drive we say storage as data store in vmware when you attach a storage you can see over here uh, you have a physical host phys uh, a physical host b physical host c uh, and storage is attached so basically this is not called drive in windows it is called drive in vm where it is called as data store just remember whenever you create a virtual machine a ram and cpu will be utilized from the esxi host see for this vm1 okay vm1 will use the ram and cpu this utilize resources will be utilized from the physical host over here and the configuration file that is vmx file the vmdk file data file everything will be stored in the data store when we will be performing a lab and we will be creating a virtual machine we will see that the resources are being provided from the host and the data store is the storage which is attached encapsulation is one of the four key benefits of vmware virtual machine in vmware virtual machine consists of several files right this virtual machine when you have created it consists of several files we have discussed only vmx file vmdk file right and this all these files all these uh, virtual machine files are kept in one directory in a single directory and a few other supporting files are also there when you create a virtual machine uh, the vmx file vmdk file and other supporting files are created and they are placed in a single directory having all necessary virtual machine file in one directory is the essence of uh, encapsulation what encapsulation does all the file of this uh, particular vm1 will be kept in single directory or vm2 in single directory vm3 in single directory if required virtual machine can be easily restored or registered using this file stored in data store what do you have to do you will go to data store over there in the data store 
you will have one directory for vm1 one, uh, vm1 one. so you will go over there and from the vmx file simply you can restore or register your machine on the esxi host this also we are going to do a live practical where we will be restoring and registering the virtual machines now let's understand one of the important concept over here we are going to discuss about thick disk and thin disk when we are completed with the discussion you will realize how better the storage utilization and efficiency can happen in vmware now let's say i want to create a virtual machine it will ask me whenever you want to create a virtual machine it will ask you how much size storage you want to create similarly what happens in a vmware workstation when you create a machine in vmware workstation why i am giving example of vmware workstation because almost everyone has used the VMware workstation in their life, right? And if you haven't used the VMware workstation, so I think this is not a right course for you. First, you have to understand the basics, right? So now let's say, similar to the concept in VMware workstation, when you create a virtual machine over here in the ESXi host, over here also in the VMware vSphere also over here, it asks you that how much size storage do you want to create? Now let's say, I will say I want a 100 GB hard disk. It will create .vmdk file with 100 GB and place it in the data store. Once I say that 100 GB I need to create, it will create a 100 GB hard disk. It will create uh, basically when a virtual machine is created along with VMX and VMDK file, uh, other supporting files are also created. We have discussed, right? So it will create a .vmdk file with 100 GB and place it in the data store. This kind of disk is called thick disk. Now let's say, over here also you can see this one. For example, when the machine was created at that time, uh, it has how much disk space in, in it? It said 20 GB. So what happened? This 20 GB VMDK file is created over here, right? And you can see that 20 GB is fully shown full 20 GB. Let's say I have created a virtual machine with 4 GB RAM and CPU and given 100 GB hard disk. It will utilize 100 GB in my data store. Till now, there is no operating system installed. Let's take an example over here. Uh, just forget 100 GB. Uh, over here, uh, when you was creating a virtual machine, it asked you that how much uh, data store size you need. You said 20 GB over here. So what happened? This 20 GB dot VMDK file is created. Over here, you have created a virtual machine uh, with, uh, let's say, 4 GB RAM and the CPU you have given and you have given 20 GB hard disk size. You can see the 20 GB hard disk is full over here. It is utilized fully, 20 GB is being utilized. And remember, this is only the virtual machine you have created. Till now, you haven't installed operating system. No application is installed and not even power on. But still, it is showing 20 GB occupied. Unnecessarily. Why? Because if you have created a th thick disk, when you will be creating a virtual machine at that time the, uh, in the data store, it will give you option. You want to create a thick disk or thin disk. So if you select a thick disk, it will fully occupy this 20 GB space or, uh, or 100 GB if you have given it will occupy 100 GB space and it will lock that much storage in the data store. Consider I have power on an install operating system and some application and let's assume it has taken for example uh, let's say another 5 GB or 10 GB. So basically what is happening over here, see although this 20 GB you have allocated it has utilized 20 GB now you have installed the application uh, and over here remember uh, nothing is used, huh? there is no operating system nothing is installed. Let's say you have installed this. Uh, operating system you have installed some application 10 gb is utilized for example still that 10 gb is blocked which is not in use but still it is blocked and it is not even allowing other to use it because you have selected thick disk so i can say that thick disk is something an example like neither i will eat nor allow anyone else to eat now see over here 
this was a shared data st uh, data store or shared storage you have a multiple vm you said that uh, use 20 gb so what is happening over here 20 gb is fully occupied by the this vm although the utilization is not 20 gb then also it has utilized so you can say that thick this is basically when you select thick this whatever data si uh, store size you give it is fully occupied although it is not utilized but it will occupy the full storage whatever you have allocated vmware says that when you are having a esxi server and a storage and you are creating a vm you will have an option to select thin disk also in thin disk even if you create a vm and size over here let's take this example okay size you have said 80 gb okay you said that the thin disk size will be 80 gb then to the storage size will be 0 kbs the storage size will be 0 kb because till now this machine is not power on this machine is not power on no operating system is installed no application nothing is installed over here so it will be 0 kb we will justify this when we will be doing a practical we will select thick this at that time you will see that full data store is occupied you will create in this zero kb machine will be created now see over here you have said 80 gb but it has not taken fully 80 gb uh, after assume that on this vm you have power on you have installed operating system 40 gb was utilized so it is saying 40 gb only utilized Although 80 GB was assigned to this, but 40 GB is utilized and 40 GB remaining is vacant. So it is not showing 40 GB. It is only showing 40 GB. It is not showing 80 GB. Right? And when you will install the operating system application uh, and all as and how the much size is required, that much size will keep on increasing gradually, but it will not block the full allocated size. It means that thin disk is dynamically expanding disk. So provisioning storage only based on what is needed now and grow over time in thin disk. Thin disk will drastically save in storage costs. Yes, of course it will save because see, uh, you have allotted 80 GB but 40 GB was utilized. It is saying 40 GB only. Over here, 40 GB you have allotted 20 GB was used. 20 GB is only there. So this 40 GB and this 20 GB, 60 GB is free. So you create other VM. You can allot that a 60 GB over there also, and you can utilize that as and when required. So this is one of the example. If you will see over here, you have volume A and volume B. Over here, it is uh, thick disk provisioning. So you can see volume A data is there and allocated and unused is there, but it is fully occupied. Similarly, in volume B also, in take this data plus allocated and unused, but it is fully occupied. This is not the case with thin provisioning. Volume A data, volume B data, available storage, whichever, uh, how much it is required, that much only it has taken. Rest all, it is freely available for you. So, summarizing the thing on thin disk and thick disk, I can say when you select thick disk, over here, the problem is uh, when you allocate thick disk, full storage size whatever you have given at during the time of configuration will be occupied by that virtual machine and although that machine doesn't have a uh, operating system nor any other application is installed in that operating system or it's not even power on the full size whatever you have allocated will be taken by that virtual machine but when we select in disk the virtual machine is created with 0 KB and as you install operating system and the data is loaded in that, the size will increase gradually. So concluding the things, I can say that th selecting the thin disk will drastically save, and storage save on storage cost. But if VMware has given an option for thick disk also, of course there is some mandatory requirement where we need a thick disk this is something suspense and when we will be doing a hands-on lab on thick disk and thin disk this suspense also will be open for you that's all in this session thank you guys see you in the next session